Um, okay, and I did mention blow blacks, and that's because this is the other big drama thing that people are really chattering about. And this is another thing that I, I took a lot of time out to try and understand. Because there's like there's the sector, the sector that we all know and love, and then there's like the kids club version of the sector, which is like the YouTube commentary community, and that's like Turkey Tom and that Aji RFC guy, and then Nick De Oreo and Tommy C. And Keemstar is like the Medicare of Bizarro World sector, okay? And, um, oh, then Blow Blacks. And Tipster, is, Tipster was like in the sector too. Who would Tipster be? Who is, who is somebody, who would be the, who would be the sector's Tipster? Because Tipster is the Tipster of, of the, the kids club. But what, what's the Tipster of the real sector? Has to be somebody who's fat and spineless and then turncoat to the other side at some point. Flamenco. That's a pretty good one. Mundane Matt. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Tipster's like the mundane Matt of the kids club. That's a good one. I like that. Someone needs to start making um we need <clears throat> it was somebody, by the way, posted um some tweets from the MC Jarbo account. The MC Jarbo guy is like in a state of unrest. He's moving or something. He's making like a big life change. Maybe I should commission like Kiwi Farms albums from him. I'll give him some money. I'm like, look, I need a, I need like a tipster uh, uh, song about uh, him. Uh, I need like a tipster love album, romance album directed at Ke Falls. That's what I need from you, MC Jarbo. And then we can we can Monday night him. It'll be funny. Um. Anyways, okay, yes. So the kids' club had convened a meeting, and I suppose this was like a. Actually, we we said that Tipster was mundane Matt, but Blow Blacks was getting like his own mundane Matt Boulder stream. Um, so they convened a cool kids' club on RG RG RFC stream, and he has been gone for like a year or something. So he made like a triumphant return stream, and he's talking about. Um, Blow Blacks' mental breakdown, which I talked about on Tuesday, so to not reiterate too much. Um, Blow Blacks is like a lefty tranny cocksucker, kind of like the VTuber I just talked about. Um, like a parasite with no actual values. And he was having a mental breakdown because despite being like a cyber bully himself, people were making fun of him. So he literally went to the hospital and took medication he was prescribed some sort of um, anti-anxiety pill so that he could stop having an obsessive hatred of or over Tommy C. And the stop hating Tommy C pills is probably one of the funniest things I've ever talked about on this stream ever for any reason. Um, so he gets on the pills, and the, but the cool kids are still mad at him because he was he lied about having BPD. He tried to be like, well, you can't hold me accountable for anything that I've done because I have BPD. And then he comes out and he says, well, actually, I'm not really diagnosed with BPD, and I just kind of thought I had it, so I lied and said that. So they were trying to say, like, well, you're you're basically like Boogie because you're lying about having a disease to try and uh, uh, explain away certain behaviors that you've had. And it was, it was a, a five-hour long, literally like five fucking hours, of mostly Nick DeOrio um, and... Uh, Bo Black's talking about how he's a pretender, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a declarative statement that I don't usually make because people usually say like Josh, do you think that X Y Z is a lol cow? And it's like, well, you know, a lol cow is somebody that anybody that people want to talk about really. So it's not like the Kiwi Farms or I in particular have a have a effective duty in declaring who and is who is not a lol cow. I, I reject that position. However. I will extend my personal opinion. I think that Bo Blacks is a lol cow. And the reason why is because he had a very pathetic display where for five hours he just kind of rolled onto his back and took, uh, you know, allowed the cool kids to take turns kicking him while he was on his back saying like, oh, woo, I just wanted to have a good, good game, have a good time. Woo, woo, woo. And it's like that pathetic display where it's like, you know, you were on the fucking internet talking shit. You were making fun of me trying to say that my tweets sound like motherfucking Sephiroth and that's just white eloquence. And then when the cool kids all make fun of you, you're gonna let you're gonna let them like line up to just kick you in the fucking ribs over and over again. 
You're going to let Audrey make $2,000 roasting you for five hours. You're going to let Nick DeRoyo shit on you and all over your face and call you a fucking liar to your face. You're going to let um, Turkey Tom show up in a clown mask and make fun of you for for another hour. You're going to let um, Keemstar come on after you. Actually, he, he left when Keemstar was showing up. I don't know why. Um, I mean, I would do the same thing, but <laughs> Keemstar shows up and um, he makes fun of him too. And then even Tipster. Tipster, the tipster, shows up. The fat man himself. The the Queen Cafal's worshipper. The toilet seat for the fart throne. Shows up and uh, calls him a faggot. Which is really out of character. And it's like, what, what's um, what's your major malfunction? Why don't you... Ha- why don't you have any audacity? I don't understand. It's a thing that it, it is a thing like Monday Matt did, though. Where Monday Matt was just on the the Boulder stream, and he was allowing these people all to make fun of him, and he he offered no defense or no excuse. He just kind of like owed up to. He's like, yeah, you know, I was in a bad headspace and stuff. I had my panic attack. I took some medication. I'm getting referred to a psychiatrist because you know I'm not in a good he- I'm not in a good place, and I owe up to it. It's just like, what's this? What's the point of like this internet groveling shit? Like, why are you groveling for the respect of these people who don't fucking like you? I, I don't understand. But that's like a very local thing. Is is this thing where it's like it's the simultaneous dissonance in wanting two different positions at once, wanting a to be pitied and forgiven of the fuck ups that you've done. And then also wanting to be respected and held in esteem as, like, a virtuous person. And when, like, Wings of Redemption was at his worst, he did the exact same thing. And Boogie is the master of this. Boogie is the probably the worst one when it comes to the... To the point where I, I would call this, like, the, the Boogie Gambit. Where it's like, if someone comes at you and he's like... Um, and Wings does this too. They both do this, this thing. But if someone comes at um, Boogie and they're like... Um, they got him on something, he'll roll over and he'll be like, well, you know, I was in a bad headspace and my cancer bills was really stressing me out and I'm so sad and shit. And, but then if you really like start making fun of him, like, wow, that sounds like you're a sad sack piece of shit. Maybe you should like fucking hang yourself. You fat cunt. He's like, actually, bro, you know, I'm doing pretty good my whole life. I got my whole life ahead of me. My health's on the up and up. I've lost weight because of my surgery. You know, I may not be at the height as I am right now, but I have my house and I have my assets. It's like, you can't can't do both you can't do the i'm so sad woe is me oh you gotta understand and then when you get like actually made fun of you start like like growing a fucking spine and being like no actually i got my whole shit together and Bo- boogie and wings both do this thing and i i think that is like one of the most quintessential locale traits is someone who um tries the the pity party and then also tries the the ego up shit and it's like it, it doesn't work like you have to you have to pick one are you like a sad pathetic piece of shit or are you like a cool guy that doesn't do anything wrong um yeah dsp does it too um who's the no boogie boogie and wings are like the really really big ones I loathe Boogie because he's obviously bullshitting most of the time and pretends he has issues he doesn't even have. Yeah. But I mean it's it's like a it's like a liar thing. Yeah, it's like I think it's like a manipulation tactic that some people what it probably is, and this might someone mentioned Ricada, he doesn't do it as much. He's um he's very rare to show his underside. He like ego ups a lot. Um, rarely does he do the, the, I was in a bad headspace shit where he shows his ass. And if he really starts doing that, you know, he's down bad, but I think it's probably a manipulation tactic that works well in one-on-ones. Like maybe you, if it, it's kind of like when you have like a piece of metal wire or, um, what's that thing that it's like a piece of metal, a solder, like soldering wire, you know how like it's soft and malleable, but if you start like twisting it back and forth, it, it like breaks, it gets hot and it breaks off. It's probably like that. Like you, if you're talking to somebody one on one, you move back and forth really fast. People can't figure out what the fuck you're doing, and they just like disconnect or accept like a truce or whatever, and they go away and they leave you alone. Like for people like like Boogie and Wings, that tactic probably works really well in those situations. But when you're online, 
and people have the freedom to like not not look at you and take a breather or go to Twitter and search something that they think you said in the past and they can like in real time call you out on your shit or they can look at the chat and be reminded of something it doesn't work at all so it's like I think it's like a manipulator thing like a gaslighting thing that becomes that comes natural to people who have learned to lie is like a maladaptive tactic in their youth but then when they're adults and especially when they get exposed to the internet where people can call them on shit in real time um, it, it becomes like a quintessential locale trait as well. It works with their family, so they try it on the internet. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Boogie will say whatever he thinks is necessary for you not to see him as a total piece of shit. Yeah, that's really obvious in particular with the, um, God, there was that stream that I did way back when with Ralph, and I think Metacur was on it. And it was a big, it was like a crazy, it was, this was like a, a, like a peak kill stream day. It was like a really anything, you don't know what's going to happen on the kill stream kind of day. Back when Ralph was at his, at his, um, total zenith. But it was like a normal stream. And then out of nowhere, Boogie joins. And then cause Boogie's on it, then Medicare and, and, um, Keemstar want to get on it. And Boogie is like appealing to this right leaning audience in like the 2016 era during Trump when people were getting super edgy before the censorship cracked down really hard during the Trump administration. But he came on and he said something about how he was like conservative and uh, he made like a bunch of like, like Hitler jokes and he called himself like uh, that Uber Wolf 1488 or something. Cause that was Uber Wolf was like his Warcraft handle. He made like, he, he came on like a totally different person, super confident and, um, played to that audience really well. And then he goes back to his, his actual Twitch stream and all of his like fans at the time that liked his streaming content as like the fat, pathetic boogie saw him appeasing these, these right wingers on this podcast. And he t did like a total 180 and he apologized for everything. And it was, it was like really crazy to, to see him like flip. So I even remember asking him like, where is this boogie? Like when you're out there and you're like doing your shit, why aren't you like this all the time? And he's like, well, this is the real boogie. This is how, is how I am. You only see like the clips of me. You only see things taken out of context. And it kind of sounded true. It's like, how, how can you be so different from my, my, um, conception of you? And the answer is because he was lying. <laughs> he was lying because that was the audience that he was trying to appease. And if it was like a private thing or if he was on like a stage, like a venue or in like a group of people at like a conference and not being filmed, then you couldn't really compare and contrast that with anything. But then when he immediately gets called out on it by his, by his existing audience on Twitch, it's like he has to backtrack everything. It's like, oh, I get it. You're just a total piece of shit. I got you. Understand. Um... Okay, there's a spammer. Which one is that? Is that one? Oh, the mods got them. I got you. Cool. Um, there is actually. Oh, I didn't read any of this. I just kind of explained it and then went off into my head. So this was like what led up to it, like right before the podcast. Uh, Penny Form says, in defense of Bo Blacks, it can be really hard to know that the, what the proper thing to say is. I'm being treated for suspected interconditioning because they believe that I have it. And I'm doing tests that confirm, especially in the moment when you're being fully regulated. Because in offense to Blowbox, correcting that a month and a half later in the middle of a new controversy on the fly isn't ideal. Uh, this also occurred a week after Boogie was exposed for doing something with cancer diagnosis to the point where Blowbox seems to take some of his own accountability for his adult self. The weird thing about the cool kids is that they, um, they're, they're like safe edgy, like all of them. Um, Turkey Tom is the most obvious one. But, like, they get, like, it's sort of this weird thing where they have to call out Bo Blacks using, like, politically correct words. You can't just call him, like, a lying retard faggot because that's what he is. Because he'll get, like, offended and he'll flag your channel and then you'll lose all your, your YouTube money. So they have to, like, call him out in this way where it's like, mm. Actually, the lie that you're telling about BPD is really offensive to, like, BPD people and people suffering from, like, the mental health conditions. And, like, it's really good that you're taking steps to, like, better yourself and to seek help for your mental state. But um, it's really unacceptable and problematic for you to say that you do have BPD when you don't have a diagnosis for it because you can cause harm to the people that are suffering with that condition. 
They, um, back in my day, I'm old. I'm 30-something now. I'm turning 32 this year. But back in my day, we used to just say, shut up, you retarded faggot. Nobody gives a fuck. And that was that was the end of it. But now we... And, uh, to be clear, when you go through that whole diatribe about mental health and shit, you're just saying that. That's what you're saying. Like, I know what you're saying. It's not it's not clever. It's like, how do we take the... How do we say, shut up, go away, you dumb fag, and turn that into something that you can say on YouTube? And it goes like, I think like, you need to take a break. You need to take a step back. And you need to reevaluate your situation. Um, and then, you know, maybe go on a mental health hiatus, but then, you know, come back and do things that are not involving the bully streams that I actually pay attention to, like something outside in like a safer area of YouTube. Um, cause it's really, it's really just not okay. It's like, okay, shut up, go away, you dumb fag. Gotcha. Let's unpack this. That's right. Um, the release DMs and shit where he was talking about his momentals and shit. I got two clips. So, when's the, so okay, this is a question that I think a lot of chat wanted to know. I want to say that this was Nick Dorio talking. No, I think the guy with the Urgoth avatar is Nick Dorio. I don't know who this guy is. Aji is the one on the top right. I don't know who the guy with the... Uh, and, you know, fun question from me. When's the last time you did coke? Uh, with Andy Worski, that one line. Wait, well, no, Andy Worski. <laughs> wait, I'm, 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 yo, I'm fucking, um, what yo, is it? Dick Matthews. Wait, oh, oh my god. I was, getting the, I was getting the jokes confused. You know, like, oh, I thought Andy was kidding. No, 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 no. Vito and Dick Masterson last year, or, uh, okay, not, not on, Andy Worski. I tried one line, like, everybody tried it, but I, I only tried one line. <laughs> sure. Like, oh, um, man. Yeah, I heard that you did a bunch of coke and then you played Sonic the Hedgehog on your Switch. Is that true? No, I I, I, I snored the coke and then I debated Vito on Mr. Girl. Okay, so, yeah, I think that's accurate. I think he showed up in L.A. and he hung out with Juju and Vito the Pito and he did coke with them. And then um, Blow Blacks got into a... Probably the I don't know where he would talk to Vito. It's either the biggest problem or it's uh the Dax's main show. Uh, but then has an argument about Mr. Girl, who's obviously a pedophile, but Juju the Cow and Vito support him. Vito is long, long term friends with uh Max Carson, aka Mr. Girl, aka pedophile. Um, so they took his side. Uh Bo Blacks did not. And but he did do Coke. So he yeah. So that's how Dick gets his friends, I guess. And this is the tipster bit. And so it was nice to have a one night truce. Yeah, yeah for sure. But uh all right, I'm gonna head out. Uh see you later, no. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, Wait, was he fake? Was he fake? <laughs> tipster showed up unexpectedly because he hates all of these people and he doesn't do drama content like he used to. Like Tipster used to be a knockoff Tommy C. Just to give you a concept of what his peak was, it was never very high. Uh, but he was a member of the Cool Kids Club, and he was like safe, edgy boy, and he did like drama content. And then everybody, absolutely everybody, made fun of him for being a tranny sucking faggot. So he became like super safe. And I think he's mostly doing like video game content now or some shit. It's like really insipid, not not even funny bad kind of content. And then he gets invited on the stream and then says goodbye, faggots. And that like makes everybody laugh and shock because number one, god damn it, now we have to censor the vid the video so that the word faggy doesn't show up on YouTube. And then um they're also like, Oh my god, I can't believe that tipster said that, so um, the tipster came in and took shots at Blue Blacks is the, the main point. Let's see. I'm trying to think. Is there anything else? Keem came on. Keem was annoying. I hate Keem. Keem was like somebody who is like viscerally obnoxious to me. I can't stand him. <laughs> Anytime that he's on anything, it's like a degree. And they're, it's so weird how they have like this reverence for him. Like, oh my God, Keemstar wants on. But we know that once Keem arrives, it becomes the Keemstar show. So let's wait a second. And then he, they keep Keem on like red while they talk to him. And then they finally let him on. He's just like, ah, I wanted to talk to, to Blow Blacks myself on stream. It's kind of weird because he's like... He's like 40-something. Keem is old. 
And he's still, like, doing this thing where he, like, shows up to talk to people, like, half his fucking age. Like, how old is, is like, Turkey Tom and Algie? They're, like, 20-something, right? They're literally half his age. But he's, like... He's like the cool, the coolest kid on the playground because <laughs> he he's old enough to have his own car. He's like a little bit too uh, too old <laughs> for this group of people, but he seems like super connected to it. And I think the reason why is like his old like drama friends. Like I think Tommy C used to work directly for Keem in various capacities, and then work for him on the Low Cal Live podcast. So he like knows them through Tommy. Um, and then, like, stays involved because it's, like, safe, edgy drama for him to farm on, on the, the drama alert show. Keem is 42. Keem ruins every stream he shows up in. Keem is, like, bizarrely... He never feels like he belongs, like, in any conversation that he talks in. And if you ever watch old clips of Keem where he's, like, mediating something, when he starts, like, pulling out, like, a popcorn tub and, like, eating into the mic as people are, like, talking about stuff, I just want to punch him in the fucking face. Like, how the fuck can you be so so possibly deliberately obnoxious and shit? It's always just rubbed me the wrong way, chat. Josh, aren't you in your 30s? Yeah, but I don't talk to kids. <laughs> I don't, like, show up on their pot. I don't, like, demand, like, hey, hey. Kids, let me onto your stream. I want to talk to Bo Blacks. I need. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, settle this. I'm the coolest fucking monkey in this jungle. Let me on. Let me on your stream. I'm gonna farm this. I just talked about stuff. I'm allowed to talk about stuff. It, uh, no, it's true though. Like a 21 year old is like a kid. Nobody is a person until they're 24. I believe that the age of consent should be 24. Anyone below the age of 24 should be banned from alcohol, drugs, sex, pornography, and anime. You're not old enough. Before you're 24, you do not have the mental capacity to handle any of these dangerous concepts, okay? <laughs> Boomer, and I'm right. You'll understand one day. You'll understand that anyone below 24 is literally not worth talking to, as as like a peer. Um, you know, I don't even have this lined up, but there is a um, oh god, who the fuck was it? There was like a oh, it was Robert Kennedy, the guy that ran for president and has like the really fucked up voice. He got a message from the New York Magazine editor that was doing a, a person piece on him. And they had, like, an emotional affair in, like, Twitter DMs over years. And then she came out and said that uh, that um, he had, like, taken advantage of her because he was twice her age. Because Robert Kennedy is, like, 70-something. And it's like, bitch, you're 31. You're 31 years old. What do you mean he took advantage of you? At what age do you become an independent adult capable of your own thoughts and actions? Like... <laughs> What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> like, if if she was, like, 20 and this was, like, going to be her breakout piece and he, like, kept, like, gating access behind sex, like, maybe there's a point there. But you're 31. You're an established journalist. You have your career already. What, what the fuck do you mean he took advantage of you and that there was a power discrepancy between you? Fuck off. Even, even feminazi, Josh, can't extend a fucking... Uh, uh, stretch that far. That's crazy. He's a 31 year old. I'm very, I'm very much in this part of my life. I, as of myself, again, a 31 year old, same fucking age. I never feel like I would, uh, I'm not, I'm not personally responsible for the shit that I do. Um, Robert stopped Kennedy. The, he's married, by the way. He had to apologize. That's, that's fucking terrible. Like, to have to tell your wife. Yeah, um, I know we've been, like, I know he's that fucked up boy. He's like, I know, I know we've been married for 40 years, but when this mid-Jewish girl from the New York Magazine said, let's, uh, let's, let's see where this goes, I was like, okay. That's not really, that's not really a conversation you want to have when you're entering your fourth decade of marriage. Thanks so for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.